How's it going? My name's Nico. I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch Online. If you want to see more videos like this one, please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload another one of these videos. So this is easily the most terrifying signature cocktail that I've ever had to come up with because I've actually never made a signature version of the Long Island iced tea. My name's Nico, I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch online, and today we're covering part three in our series of making and mastering classic cocktails, specifically for The Last Word. So we've been doing this series, right, where we cover classic cocktails in three parts. In the first part, I show you how to make and master the classic cocktail with a classic recipe. In the second part, I show you what similar ingredients you can get to substitute in, and what similar classic cocktails you can make now with those extra bottles. And then in part three, which is what we're doing here, I show you how to make a signature cocktail in that same style from parts one and two from scratch. And today we are covering the Long Island iced tea. So we've already made the Long Island iced tea and I've made a blue motorcycle, which goes by a couple of other names that you guys can find out in part two if you want to. The main things about this cocktail, right? When you look at the components empirically, you have four base liquors, you have a sweetening liqueur, you have your sweet and sour mix or your sour component, which can be citrus juice, it can be sweet and sour mix. And then you have a lengthener in the form of some sort of soda or topper, right? In this instance, it's Coca-Cola and here it's it was Sprite, but it can be a handful of different things. So what can you do? How far can you go when you're making this signature cocktail? Well, the first thing you can do you can substitute your liquor. You can find dark liquors, you can find flavored liquors, or you can do some sort of split base where you mix different kinds of liquors together. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can find extra liqueurs, right? You can find bitter liqueurs, sweet liqueurs, bitter sweet liqueurs, right? You can use Aperol instead of your Curacao, or your blue Curacao, or your Cointreau. You can use Luxardo Maraschino, which is gonna be sweet and tart. It's a cherry liqueur. You can use that in place of your sweetening liqueur. Or you could go crazy, use something very bitter like Averna or Fernet. You can also substitute your mixer. So instead of that Sprite or Cola, you can use tonic, ginger beer, grapefruit soda, or whatever kind of sparkling soda you have laying around. You can add bitters, right? You can add cardamom bitters, lavender bitters, Angostura bitters, Peixo, it's orange bitters, anything you have laying around. Or you can add flavored syrups to add sweetener. You can add sour or citrus. There's a lot of different things that you can do to really make this your own, as long as you stay in that same template that we mentioned before. So it's gonna be four base liquors, a sweetening liqueur, a lengthener, which is probably gonna be some kind of soda, and then, a sour component, which is either gonna be freshly squeezed juice or a sweet and sour mix. Let me set these aside, because this is about to get very weird. These are the base liquors that I have decided to go with, the four. We have a flavored liquor here, replacing our silver rum. This is Malibu coconut flavored rum. We also have a dark rum, an aged rum here, that's gonna add a little bit more flavor, a little bit more spice. Some notes of like vanilla, cardamom, allspice, baking spices. Uh, sort of that dram sort of flavor. We also have a citron vodka here, which at a, a normal bar should be available, right? If they're ready to serve things like cosmopolitans and lemon drops. And instead of tequila, I have mezcal. Those are the base liquors we're gonna work with. The sweetening liqueur gets even weirder. For the sweetening liqueur, I'm gonna be using drambui, which is a scotch-based, honeyed, allspice, dram, liqueur type thing. It's very hard to describe and, and shoehorn into a specific kind of flavor profile, but it's most commonly used in the rusty nail alongside something like a scotch, right? In equal parts, stirred, served on the rocks. Great cocktail. I'm using this because the theme I want to go for with this Long Island iced tea, and this is going off of the island theme, I'm really going out on a limb here, is a sailor's or a pirate's Long Island iced tea. So maybe not a Long Island, but maybe the last island. So, or or the long lost island. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Leave, leave a comment and tell me what you wanna name this cocktail and we'll see how it goes. So I just need to decide what citrus and what lengthener I'm gonna use, but all of that can come after I put all of this in a glass. I'm gonna give it a good whiff and I'm gonna decide for myself sort of what direction I need to go from there. So, first things first, grab your glass. You're gonna want a tall glass for this. You don't have to risk breaking it when you're making it at home. So equal parts, all of your base liquors. I am actually gonna start with a half an ounce of all of these. If you've watched parts one and two, 
which hopefully you have. Uh, I made all of those at three quarters an ounce, but just in case one of these has too much heat or too much flavor, too much anything, I'd rather start out with half an ounce. Actually, there we go. Start out with half an ounce and then work my way up from there. It's gonna be easier to dial in that way. And then our sweetening liqueur, also half an ounce. All right, so. I'm literally, I'm flying in blind. I always fly in blind when I make these signature cocktails. I actually don't make them ahead of time to make sure that they're gonna work. So when you see my reaction every single time, it is it is actually 100% accurate. So it's not done, but I am gonna smell it and just see where it needs to go from here. Oh, surprisingly actually, it kinda works. It smells like chartreuse to me. I've cracked the code. <laughs> I know all of the, what is it, like 130 botanicals that are in chartreuse. Hmm. Cool. So actually, yeah, it does have this like, uh, just, this is just the liquors in here, so it's not done, but it has that uh, sort of like oily viscosity that coconut has. And I'm getting a lot of the spices between the drambuie and the, um, the dark rum. The citrus or the citrone from the vodka comes out a little bit. The smokiness from the mezcal does add this really nice sort of landscape, this good texture for the rest of the drink. So I think for the lengthener, I'm leaning more towards Sprite than Cola because I want that extra effervescence, that extra bright flavor to brighten this up. So I think I'm gonna go with lime because this does feel smell and taste so far like a very nautical drink. So all of those will be within that same theme. So squeeze some lime really quick. Oh, it's not enough. I need more lime juice. I'm gonna add ice before I add lengthener. I'm getting really excited about tasting this now. I can smell it more and more the more stuff that I add to it. All right, uh, stir it around. I mentioned this in parts one and two. If you have a stirring rod, which I do, you can grab it, but you don't need one of those. If you used a knife, you can stir it with a knife. You can stir it with a straw. You can stir it with your finger if you're making it for yourself because it won't matter, right? I'm not out here trying to complicate your life. I'm gonna use this, which is slightly dangerous. Do not do as I do. People's Choice, Best Bartender in Charlotte, 2020. <laughs> stirring, stirring cocktails on YouTube with a knife. Uh, that's true, actually, look it up. Anyway, cheers, let's see how it tastes. Man, it's, upset <laughs> it's upsetting how good that is, actually. You know what, though? I'm glad this was the last one that I made because I might actually finish this one. I might, it's, how did I make this? Okay, so to recap really quick, because I don't want to forget how to make that. Um, it's, I did half an ounce citron vodka, half an ounce mezcal, uh, half an ounce of uh, flor de caña, uh, aged rum, half an ounce of Malibu coconut flavored rum, and half an ounce of drambuie, right? And then three quarters an ounce actually of lime juice, add ice, topped with Sprite. If you want to know the measurement of Sprite, normally your lengthener is about two ounces uh, by the time you're done with all of this. Make this at home, right? Make your own signature cocktail for sure, but try this. This is actually very good. And let me know in the comments what you want to call this cocktail because 100% this is going to show up in my cocktail book. I'm making that at my next party, actually. I don't care if it's the dead of winter, I'm making that. So what kind of advanced techniques can you use at work and at home to make sure that your drinks really do stand out? First of all, you can change your shirt, which I've done for no reason in particular. Uh, one of the first things you're gonna wanna do is change your garnish or change it up just a little bit. So the easiest thing to do is if you have a citrus garnish, like a peel, a wheel, or a wedge, or something like that, is find a way to sort of jazz that up a little bit. What I like to do when I have something that has like a wheel or something like that, I'll take the whole fruit, hopefully before I've started the drink, I'll take the whole fruit, cut it down the middle, and then cut it again, basically just about a centimeter away. And that's how I make my wheels, all right? And then you'll see come apart pretty easy, even pretty much all the way across. Uh, normally I would have started with that. That would have gone in the drink. This is probably gonna end up in a daiquiri or something later on. 
So now that you have your wheel, easy thing to do would be to boom, slice it down the middle, put it on the side of your drink. But we're trying to make this an advanced technique. So one thing that I like to do, and if you're not comfortable using knives, you don't have to do this. You can get kind of close using a peeler. And if you are using a knife, just be careful at home, right? Grip your knife correctly. You're gonna make a small incision just beneath the skin. And this works with lemons, oranges, limes, grapefruit. And then you're basically just gonna cut to separate the skin from the meat of the citrus. Uh, and I recommend going at least halfway around. And now you have this neat little tail that you can spin up into this nice kind of like wheel twist combo garnish. And then you place it there so that it's right on display. Yeah, check that out. It's one thing that you can do easily to make sure that your drink stands apart. A lot of other advanced techniques, so they're gonna take a little bit more work, right? So one of the things that you can do is you can try doing uh, home ingredients. So with this one, normally the recipe calls for a sour or a sweet and sour or citrus or something like that. You can make your own lime cordial at home and that won't just help with this cocktail. It'll help with like daiquiris, mojitos, gimlets, like so many other cocktails down the line. So that's one simple thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is try doing like your home infusion. So we used a coconut rum, a ready bought coconut rum for this cocktail right here. But you can easily make your own coconut oil fat washed rum at home with like, you know, basically a pot and then like a filter, some rum and some coconut oil. Another technique that you can use is something called layering. And as the name would suggest, you're gonna try and float something here on top. It's even better if it's a different color. So here maybe we'll float blue curacao. Uh, and it's also better if you have something that's like really high in alcohol because it will float on top and you can light that on fire. Keep in mind though, there are some dangers whenever you're working with an open flame behind the bar, even when you're at home serving your friends and family. There are a lot of other advanced techniques that you can use on this cocktail specifically because it has so many different ingredients and it represents all five of the roles that you can have in a specific cocktail. Just try to keep it simple, keep it relatively simple because it's already a seven ingredient cocktail, if not more, depending on who you ask and how you make it at home or how you order it at another bar. To reiterate, when you're learning how to make drinks at home or when you're learning how to make drinks for work, step one, find a classic or find some classics that you already enjoy, make those, master those as quickly and as simply as possible. Step two, Find the extra ingredients and things that you can substitute in from that original recipe to make other classic cocktails. And then step three, once you've mastered steps one and two, take the reins and make a signature cocktail of your own using all the same steps that I described earlier and then some advanced techniques to make sure that your drink does stand out uh, from other bartenders and mixologists and your guests will remember your drink as well. Thank you all for sticking around. Thanks for all of your help and support. Hopefully we have been helpful and supportive for you all as well, since that's why we do everything here. If you learned anything, please like and subscribe. And if you haven't already, comment what drinks you wanna learn how to make at home. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.